Welcome to the third build in part one of the Insane Nightmare Survival Guide, The Engineer. If you haven't seen the first build, The Brute, and the second build, The Assassin, I would recommend starting there, because this is by far the most challenging build in the series. Those videos will give you a lot of help for surviving Insane Nightmare and will give you a bit of context on the series. But if you're still here, let's get into the final build. The Engineer is an intellect build which turns the Insane Nightmare meta on its head. Instead of being combat oriented like the other two builds, this build will play a much more passive playstyle, avoiding fights in the early game. Now this build is very challenging for new players because you have to know how to manage your resources, acquire rare items reliably, build a good base and manipulate the game's AI, which is pretty much the exact opposite of how the brute build works. The reward for this big brain playstyle though is a very refreshing playthrough that doesn't feel like any other build. Using weapons many of you may have never found much use for with a streamlined perk build, which allows you to dominate the game much sooner than even the brute or the assassin. So let's get into the playstyle of the build. First as always get your tutorial done for the four starting skill points and then you want to get gathering and building as soon as possible. Now, the other builds would go straight into grinding quests with their combat perks but you'll want to avoid that until a little bit later so that you can just skip that combat early on. You want to spend the first couple of days gathering resources and building yourself a decent horde base. It may be tempting to go out and quest to try and get certain items but I would really recommend you hold off. Once you have a decent base built up you should have some levels and you'll want to prioritize getting yourself to better barter rank 3 to access the better secret stash. At the same time you're doing all this you'll want to check in at the trader every now and then and see if they have any mechanical parts, forged iron or a wrench and get them by any means possible. If that means doing a couple of quests then go ahead and do it. Just be really cheesy with the basic weapons the level 1 bow for sneak attacks, the stone sledgehammer for knockdown and the bone knife for bleed, using pillars and hatches where needed. You really cannot take a 1v1 fight reliably early on with this build. You want a wrench because you're going to spend a lot of your first week scrapping cars and trucks and selling that scrap back to the traders, which will get you a decent amount of XP and plenty of money. All this time avoiding fights wherever possible except for when you're back at your horde base, which you can use to get some XP at night. Don't underestimate just how much money you can get from scrapping all these cars and trucks. It's a really good way of making money early on. You want to buy some kind of gun as soon as possible, then the next big thing you desperately want for this build so that you can start questing properly is a robotic turret. The one that shoots, not the sledge turret. The robotic turret is a big weapon for this build and it will really help you wipe the floor with most POIs in the game. Electrical trucks are one thing to look out for when you're out on your scrapping spree. You want to search them for the tech junkie books that spawn in almost all of them, which will improve your turret, and you'll want to search them for a stun baton as well. Now the stun baton is pretty useless in most scenarios on insane difficulty, but for this build it does have two particular use cases I'll go over later. Once you have a decent gun from Better Barter and your starter horde base, you should be fine for the first horde. One of the cool things about this build is depending on how quickly you level, you could get yourself a generator and some electrical fences up before the first horde. This strategy really is the strength of the engineer build. Where everyone else has to go through the motions of the early game, you'll be pretty much skipping straight into the much later stages of the game and be able to take on much harder POIs and hordes at the cost of a very slow and difficult difficult first couple of days. But if you can do it right, you'll be comically over prepared for the first few hordes. Once you get a robotic turret, you'll want to invest in the robotics inventor perk to make it stronger. If you can get two of these down in a hallway, even in a tier 5 POI, there's not a lot of zombies that can get past them. Just in case though, you will want to bring some kind of gun and maybe some contact grenades if you get split from the turret. Because your stun baton basically just tickles the zombies more than anything. Contact grenades are really cheap and can usually be bought from most traders. A few things to remember are that the robotic turrets don't excel when fighting on really tight spaces on Insane Nightmare because they don't have time to damage the enemy enough without a decent amount of space. Also, the robotic turrets really eat through a lot of your iron, with the benefit of not having to gather lead, brass, coal, nitrate or paper, so keeping your iron stocks up is a really good idea, even more than usual here. There's not much else I can really tell you about the robotic turrets that are a very unique weapon in this game and you have to get a feel for how they work, and we're best to place them as you play. Obviously, areas with long sight lines are ideal. So let's talk about the gear for this build in a little bit more detail. First is the stun baton. To make it not wholly useless, you'll want to find the tech junkie books which allow you to craft the repulsor mod and let you get more charged shots. Charged shots with the stun baton stun enemies and prevent them from moving or attacking, allowing for a hypothetical robot turret to tear them a hypothetical new one. I'm sure you can figure out the synergy between them here. 
Repulsor mod takes this further, making the stun baton ragdoll enemies when it stuns them. This mod allows you to chain stuns easier as you can charge up the baton by hitting them as they try and stand up allowing you to essentially stun lock zombies for as long as your stamina allows. The other book adds extra chances to randomly charge the baton when attacking enemies which increases the amount of stuns you'll get before you run out of your stamina. On Horde Nights you can use the Nerdtats candy to make the stun baton stun affect multiple nearby zombies, which when combined with the other two books gives you some of the most insane melee crowd control in the game. It is a shame that the stun baton does basically no damage, so you really do have to keep those robotic turrets close to shred targets as they flail around on the floor, but it works very effectively if you can pull it off. For your robotic turrets you'll want to keep at least two on you, and you'll want to add a drum magazine to them, because with maxed out robotics inventor, and drum mags you can get almost 300 shots per turret, so you'll have to do a lot less reloading which is helpful. You'll also want a trigger group mod for the 12% faster fire rate. Any of them works here because the turret will just fire full auto anyway. You can hit fire the robotic turret in dire situations, just keep in mind that the recoil is more or less uncontrollable, so burst fire where possible. As for the other mods, throw on whatever you have. Remember to get all the tech junkie books so that you can bulk craft armor piercing robotic turret ammo, which is really, really effective, but it does use a lot of iron, so you will want to get that efficiency. There is one severe weakness of this build though, and that is that the robotic turrets will pretty much always activate demo buttons when they get the chance. So at game stage 150 and higher, you may want to change your strategy on Horde Knights, either using explosives at the demo's feet, or with a gun. I'd recommend shotguns because this build does get a decent amount of strength later on. Now let's get into the perk allocations of this build. You'll spend your first 4 skill points from the tutorial on some mining perks so that you can get that base up faster. Then you'll want to grab salvage operations to make sure you can craft wrenches and so that you can get a little bit more money. Next you want to rush better barter for that better gear that I mentioned earlier, then get some advanced engineering and demolitions expert so that you can get a workbench and craft pipe bombs for Horde Knight. Master Chef is purely a convenience, you can skip it if you like. Then if you have a robotic turret it would be a good idea to start specking into it before Horde Knight and from there we want to go back into better barter, more advanced engineering and more robotics so that you can get even better gear. Now that you have some essential gear you're also going to want to start getting a dating adventurer so that you can make the most out of quests and then go into more intellect. Robotics 5 so that you can place down a second turret in combat, better barter for even better gear, and advanced engineering so that you can max out your crafting efficiency. Next, you want to power into strength and mining so you can keep up with the resource costs of this build. Then, near the end of the mid game, it would really be useful to grab some shotgun perks so that you can phase out robotic turrets on Horde Knight as they are a bit of a liability once demos start spawning. After this, you can do pretty much anything you want in the end game. You have everything this build needs, as is. The perception will give you more salvage and more explosive damage, so I would take that route. The engineer is the ultimate test of your game knowledge on Insane Nightmare, but it's easily one of the most powerful builds in the game that can wipe the floor with some of even the most difficult POIs in the game. It's also one of the most unique ways to play the game in Alpha 20, where many of the builds do feel a little bit samey. With that, if you've watched all three of these build guides, you should know which one you want to try next, so get in there and try Insane Nightmare and stay tuned for more tutorials oriented around playing the hardest difficulty in the game. Part 2 will be all about questing, the tiers, the types, the rewards and any details that could give you an edge in your next playthrough. Quests are the most potent progression mechanic in this game, so you should know how they work if you want to thrive on Insane Nightmare. Thank you to my channel members for making these videos possible. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.